to you by Bayer Aspirin. Pure aspirin for pure pain relief. Bayer works wonders. And now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you. And now, a young man who, with his talented wife, Edie Gourmet, will be enchanting audiences at the Copacabana beginning September 29th. Steve Lawrence. Thank you, Alan. It's my pleasure right now to have you meet uh, the prettiest PhD ever turned out by Columbia University. Uh, truly a rare combination of beauty and brains, Miss Sue Oakland. And on my left, the most colorful man in publishing, with his brown eyes and rosy cheeks, and for whom I've always had a purple passion, Bennett Cerf. Now, here's a sight for sore eyes. And if your eyes aren't sore now, they may be after you see them. For the first time in full color on television, our ululating master of ceremonies, John Charles Daly. Well, here we are after nearly 17 years in bright, bubbling color and such problems. You know, Bennett and I had to buy a new suit. Bennett's old black one was so rusty, we sold it for scrap. <laughs> I flew off to Hawaii to Mahina Hina Kai on Maui to get a suntan. Bennett we gave a transfusion to, and we've been running him around the block for the last hour. <laughs> but he doesn't look bad. Arlene, bless her, looks more beautiful every time I look at her, and I can't think of a better way to dress our panel on the night that we go to color than to have uh, Sue Oakland and Steve Lawrence as our guests. You look very handsome. Thank you. Bennett, nice to have you here. <laughs> well, we've got some very interesting <laughs> occupations for the panel to celebrate this uh, new milestone in our long career. And we'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. Right now, let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Janice Chapino, right? Yeah. All right. Is it Miss or Mrs. Mrs. Tapino? Mrs. Mrs. Tapino, you don't mind if I tell the panel that you're a junior at the University of New Mexico, but what we're really interested in is, is a business that you've developed. Now tell us, where are you from? Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah. All right, Mrs. Tapino, may I present the panel? Okay. Now, if you'll join me over here, please. And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Topino is self-employed and deals in a product. And we will begin things with uh, Bennett Surf. Mr. Pino, may I assume that this product is not used by all the people around Albuquerque who work for the government? That is, in their, in, with their nuclear work? Yes, you may assume that. But it might be used mm -hmm. by them as private citizens? Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Is the product that you deal with used by both men and women? Yes. Equally? Bennett, that would be very hard to say. I think we can say fairly and with no intention to mislead in any way that it is used by both men and women. Whether we would be able to say equally and be specific as to whether it was 50-50 or 60-40 or 70-30, <laughs> I don't know, that's a little rough. 
In color, you must sound even better than you do. In <laughs> Mr. Pino, is your product consumable? No, it is not. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Is it ever found indoors, Mr. Pino? Yes. Uh, if one had it indoors, would it be out where you'd see it? Yes. Rather than tucked away? Yes. Uh, is it uh, a useful product? Yes, it is. Is it also decorative? Yes, it is. Uh, uh, Mrs. Topino would certainly suggest it was decorative. Is it, um... I would like to say here, with your permission, that we do hold this product to be decorative, but we can also think that under some circumstances we might find a different opinion in the panel so that you can take it both ways. Uh-huh. That's no help at all, John. Mm. Um, is it made of a solid material? Yes. Is it uh, anything, is it larger than a bread box? Yes, it is. Is it anything you can sit on or in? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was back in Mahina Hina Kai. Uh, do you mean, does it have as a purpose that no, it be No, I just mean, <laughs> can you, I mean, as you can sit on a table, can you sit on this, whatever it is? Yes. With Mrs. Topino will agree, then I will agree, that you could sit on it, yes. I see. However, its primary use is not that it is something to be sat upon. That's right. Is it when it is in use, is it on the floor rather than on a wall? Yes. Um, is it, uh, does it contain anything? Is it used to hold anything? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, does it hold anything that's alive? No. No, I wouldn't think so. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, has it ever lived? <laughs> no, then I assume that this is a, a, a product that holds something that is not alive. Uh, would I use this product? Yes. Uh, would this in any way, shape, or form have anything to do with sports? No. Mm, no sport I can think of. Three down and seven to go, Ms. Oakland. <laughs> would this be likely to be found in my living room if I had one? Not likely, no. No, I wouldn't think so. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Now, I asked you, Mr. Pino, whether your product was consumable. Now, I'm going to ask you, the things that go into this product that you make, are they sometimes consumable? Yes. Might they be sometimes liquid? Yes. Might this be a thing that you would keep uh, intoxicating liquors in at times? Oh, heaven <laughs> for <laughs> Ben. <laughs> heaven <laughs> for Ben. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Uh, is it something that you might find in the kitchen? Yes. Can it hold a variety of things? Oh, yes. Is it any kind of a canister? Yes. What kind of a canister is it, Mr. Pino? Well, uh, no. <laughs> no, actually, uh, Mrs. Topino is being generous. I, I might likely have said no to that, but uh, in the larger sense of canister, we'll let you get away with it. It isn't a bread box, is it, Mr. Vino? No, it is not a no. bread box. Uh, mm -hmm. If it is in the kitchen and it holds several different kinds of things, could it be used? <laughs> could it be used for refuse? Yeah. Oh, could it? Yeah. <laughs> a beautiful girl like you has to do with garbage cans. <laughs> Didn't you say it was decorative? Oh, yes, sir. I have a very decorative one. You I, have? I keep well, the garbage outside of it. Just <laughs> All we've done is to, to, you know, to identify the basic product. But what does Mrs. Topino have to do with garbage care? Apart from selling them, maybe she manufactures them. Uh, no, that's six down and four to go, Mr. Lawrence. <laughs> she fills them up. Yeah. <laughs> that's seven down. Well, really she empties up. them. Miss <laughs> Oakland. Well, do you decorate them in right. some way? Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Tapino has a little company. It's called Cans by Jan. Oh, coming from Janice, needless to say. And she started out doing it for fun and then uh, showed, a, so, showed some of her products. She draws on them, paints uh, whales and uh, cats. cats and These flowers. 
Are these all done by hand? Yes, they oh, are. Done well, how many me. can you turn out uh, a week or a day? Or If I get a pretty good order, I'll turn them out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, you are absolutely the first garbage can decorator I've ever met. <laughs> Well, we very nearly stuck them, so we might as well stick them. We'll throw the rest of those over. That was a lot of fun. I hope yeah. you enjoyed it. It's very nice very to have nice. you with us on What's My Mind. <laughs> we'll have another contestant for you in just a moment after this word. All right. Now to meet our next contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Larry? Larry Lake? Lake is right. How are you? Master Lake, where are you from? Downey, California. And Downey, California is where in relation to Los Angeles? It's at the edge of Los Angeles. On the edge of Los Angeles. Could, uh, and would you be willing to reveal your age at this moment in time? I'm eight. He's eight years old. And now, Master Lake, may I present our panel? And then if you'll join me over here, please, sir. We will let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All set? Well, we can tell you that Master Lake is self-employed and deals in a service, and we will begin things with uh, Arlene French. Well, Master Lake, um, is, there, is there anything in what you do that has to do with the arts as a performer? Yes. Uh, have you ever performed in pictures? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Lawrence. Master Lake, I don't know what it is you do, but I... Can you get my kid a job? <laughs> if it doesn't have anything to do with pictures, uh, does it have anything to do with, uh, with television? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, if it's a sometimes on television, does it have anything to do with the commercials that are seen on television? No. Two down, a date to go. Sue up. Do you have any uh, special skill that you employ during your performance? Yes. Uh, would it have to do either with singing or dancing? No. That's three down and seven to go. And Bennett, I'm happy to tell you the fly came over with us. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> how did you, you get away from our link letter? That's what I wanted. <laughs> uh, seriously, Larry, is there any music of any kind connected with the, with the kind of performing that you do? No. No music at all? No music. Four down and six to go. Arlene. Larry, when you are performing, do you wear something other than what you're wearing now? Could no. you wear something other? No, we have to give you a no on that, well, because but, we would oh, agree, Arlene, that he, while he would not necessarily wear this specific coat and this specific pair of trousers, a coat and trousers of similar character in nature would be perfectly adequate and usual when he is functioning. Is Very that... well, John. All right, Steve Lahr. Well, it, it wouldn't be a costume. In other words, if I saw you on television, I would recognize you pretty much. Yes, if you'd seen him... It wouldn't be That's decorated right. in any way. That's right. Uh, has, uh, do you need any special training for this? Has that question been asked? Yes. You do need special training for this? Uh, it's on television sometimes. Can I call for a little conference? You may have 30 seconds for a conference. Yes, yes, but that's musical. Yes, but he would maybe Steve, mm -hmm. maybe he's an acrobat. That's what I think. Isn't that musical? That's musical. No. 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 He doesn't need to be a musical acrobat. No, true. We've had enough. All right, kid, what do you do? We've had enough of this. <laughs> Are you an acrobat? I'll, I'll take no. it from six down. And go. <laughs> do you have something with you during the performance of your special skill? Yes. It's some sort of equipment. Yes. Um, do you stand on it in any way? No. Nope. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Surf. 
Larry, does the specialty that you perform require dexterity of some sort? <laughs> what was the answer? The answer, the answer is yes. yes. Uh, is there any kind of sport involved in what you do? No. Ah, uh, this gets a little edgy. This gets a little edgy. With Larry's permission, I will say that I think there are some who, out of usage and custom, even though it technically may not be true, would consider this to come in the broad scope of sport activity. All right, Larry. For your service, for the thing that you do, do you require some kind of an object? Yes. Does the object either spin, fly, or twirl? No. No, I don't think so. It down and do to go, Miss Fred. That's eliminating yo-yos, kites, <laughs> and yogurt. Uh, uh, Larry, do you ever get, excuse, Master Lake, do you ever get in or on this object? No. Nine down and one to go, Steve Lawrence. Larry, are there other people involved uh, in with what you do? No. Not I'm going to ask you for the last time, Pete. <laughs> He's doing it, Steve. Other people do it. Larry demonstrates <laughs> trick billiard shots. Oh. Trick. Oh. It's sponsored by Rudgwick. <laughs> he makes, uh, he has 25 trick shots that he has mastered himself. He makes three or four appearances a month, you, often sponsored by Brunswick. You don't know the name of Minnesota Fat? Go again. Yeah. <laughs> this is Minnesota, Minnesota Short. City. Yeah. <laughs> Minnesota, Minnesota Short. John, I'm curious, where does a, uh, where and how does an eight-year-old become a pool shark or, mm. you know? A hustler. Well, it's, a, <laughs> it's what you call a misspent, well-spent you. <laughs> misspent, well-spent you. Now, let me get it, because I don't know the answer. Would you consider billiards in this area of sports? Oh, sure. Yeah. Billiards. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But some people might, technically, they might not feel it. But I think that by usage and custom, we could so do. So, Larry, you're a great sport. Thanks very much. Nice to have had you with us and watch my life. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this message. And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which, as you all know, the panel is always blindfolded. Are the blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? Just a reminder, panel, in this case, a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we will begin with uh, Sue Oakland. Are you uh, a performer in a television series this season? Hmm? What was the answer? No. One down and nine to go. I didn't hear the answer. It was a no, Bennett. But I'd like to hear the, the <laughs> mystery guests say no. No. Did you get that, Bennett? I can duplicate it for you. No. How's that? <laughs> Are you a male performer? Yes. Yes. Miss Francis? Are you a performer in the theater? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Was that yes? Yes, that was yes with a mm hmm. This is really to give you some help. It's just to suggest that right our guest. That are you uh, are you currently in a Broadway show? No. Two down to date to go, Miss Oakland. Are you currently in a movie? Yes. Mr. Sir? Are you in a movie that is now playing or has recently played in one of the big show houses on in the Broadway sector? Mm. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Are you something other than uh, an American born? Nope. You Four. are American born, then? Yes, American born. Four down and six to go, Mr. Lawrence. 
Are you in a picture soon to be released? Yes. Miss Oakland? Do you talk like that in the movies? <laughs> <laughs> Are you no young such luck. and handsome and play leading men, mainly? Well. I was going to step in and say a resounding yes to that, but didn't have to. I think the audience has answered your question. Mr. Serf? Do you, uh, in the course of your motion picture performances, sing or dance? No. No? That's a no, that's uh, five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Are you in a picture that will soon be released called uh, Kaleidoscope? Uh, well, let me, are you Warren Beatty? Is it all right to remove the mask? You can, you can take your mask off, Steve. <laughs> the kaleidoscope is right. It's going to open at uh, Radio City in the next, uh, soon, I guess, in the next few weeks. His picture was in the New York Times today as soon to open in kaleidoscope, and I remembered that, uh, Warren. My fantasy was that you'd take off your mask. And, and say, who, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where, but somebody has seen a preview, Warren, and I don't think it's fair to give away the plot, but... Um, it's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Do you want to give it away? I don't think no, I don't think we should give it away. Is it but it's somebody great looking fun. through a kaleidoscope and seeing all different... No, that it's not. It's a caper picture. It's got oh, to do it's with caper. cards. Caper. Teach you how to cheat at cards, if you're interested in that. Did you meet the eight-year-old billiard shark? <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, that comes later. But this is great fun. It, it, I'm not going to give away the plot wire, but it has, huh? to, it, it has to do with cards. He gets a hold of a control, actually. It's a, it's a way of beating all the casinos. Yeah, and it's, it's, and, it's uh, a good idea. It's great fun. Do you and have a patent on it? I don't have a patent on it. It was tried once, and it, it didn't work. It didn't work? Uh, it uh, it worked for a will. long time. It worked <laughs> for a long time. It's called skimming? No, no, it, it worked for a long time, and uh, a man in the south of France that mm -hmm. ran a casino told me about it. But if I go further than this, I'll have to give you the whole plot. Yeah. But just as a sidebar, do you know, have you ever met Scarney? The great... Uh, John Scarney? John Scarney. Yeah. He sat down with me one night and asked me, he said, now we'll play some poker, we'll play four hands. What do you want? I said, a royal straight flush. And he sat there, broke a deck open, shuffled it up, and dealt me a royal straight flush. Well, without you know, even looking at the face of the John cup. and Warren, there's a man named Saul who's written a book called Beat the Dealer, which yeah. is so accurate that they won't let him anywhere near Las Vegas. Really? Well, especially with a baseball bat. Yeah. <laughs> we found there were hundreds of ways, and the most intricate possible schemes that people had used with electrical devices that they'd put into their yeah. clothes. And, you know, Steve Allen had figured out a way in uh, Las Vegas how to beat the roulette table. This was true. He uh, watched this uh, uh, old lady at the roulette table playing mm -hmm. for about 14 hours, and she won about $2,500. And he followed her out in the alley and mugged her. <laughs> Fun and fun. Great success and nice to have you here. Well, I think in glorious color you've done pretty well tonight, panel, and I offer congratulations. We'll all be back after this word. Well, you've all been splendid in color. Uh, those who'd like to see Bennett in non-color can see him in South Bend and Elkhart in Indiana and go to Omaha, too. And he doesn't look bad in non-color. And good night, Arlene Francis. <laughs> good night, dear John. Good night, everybody. And to you, good luck, Steve Lowe. Thank you very much, Arlene. And for all the friends of What's My Line that are celebrating the New Year shortly, have a very happy one. Good night, sir. Good night, Steve. Good night, and good night, Bennett. Good night, Bennett. Good night, Love you. Left to know that a girl like you goes to Columbia. <laughs> Wish you did, too, John. Good night. <laughs> That's his alma mater, you know. He's getting soft. And thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Life. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. This is Johnny Olson speaking. It's Francis Gown, it's from Bonneville Teller, and it's Oakland's Gown by Samuel Winston.